Hello there. Thank you for visiting iFilm Recap. Today I'm going to explain a movie, Jumper. Modest youngster David Rice has a keen interest in lovely Millie, who fantasies about venturing to the far corners of the planet. At the point when he shocks her with a little gift, a snow globe of the Eiffel Tower, teasing bully Mark gets it and tosses it out onto the cold surface of the stream. Determined, David branches out on the ice and recovers it, waving. Then falls through the ice and is cleared away from the opening by the quick current. He is sure to kick the bucket in the freezing water, without air. Furthermore, unexpectedly winds up lying inclined in the library between the bookshelves, in a colossal spout of gallons of water, wheezing and alive. He walks home, splashing wet, where his dad berates him. David goes into his room, putting a chain on the entryway. Be that as it may, when his irate dad blasts it open, there is just a whirl of wind, David has vanished. He ends up in the sodden passageway of the obscured library, and acknowledges he has magically transported there once more. It occurs to him that he at long last has a method for completely changing him, to get away from his circumstance, the same way his mom deserted the family when he was five. He magically transports home and recovers a little reserve of cash and a few belongings. However, before he leaves town, he stops outside Millie's home. Millie isn't comforted by her mother's arms. She is certain that David is dead. She hears a commotion outside, steps carefully out into the yard. What's more, finds the snow globe sitting on the swing set. From this she realizes he is alive, however he doesn't answer her calls. The following day, he is on a transport to the city, where he leases a modest room. He works on magically transporting in the recreation area, figuring out how to control his power. Then, at that point, he cases a bank, and ransacks it by magically transporting straightforwardly into the vault around midnight. He chuckles as he understands his sack isn't sufficiently large to remove all the cash. Magically transports back to his pitiful inn for another sack. Furthermore, rehashes this until his room is flooded with cash and he lies on a bed of it. In any case, the baffling Roland shows up at the bank examination, professing to be from the NSA, astoundingly unsurprised by this locked entryway burglary. It is obvious that he knows about magically transport capacities, and is important for a strong gathering that needs to track down this bank robber. Years have gone by, and David has a costly city condo, papered with photos of his reality voyages, and a little vault room loaded with cash. He partakes in the delights of life any place they are, riding in Fiji, eating on the Sphinx in Egypt, getting a young lady in an English bar. He stages starting with one spot then onto the next in his home, as opposed to strolling even two speeds, and dismisses the difficulties of standard individuals displayed on TV caught in rising floodwaters. His tranquility is upset by the appearance of Roland, whose electrical weapon and wires keep David from magically transporting. We discover that Roland's main purpose for existing is to obliterate jumpers, individuals who magically transport, for, just God ought to have the ability to be all over the place. Frantic. David oversees some way or another to move away, transporting back to his childhood room. His dad is made aware of his presence, and comes to the room entryway, imploring him to remain. David magically transports away as his dad powers the entryway open. His pure way of life is upset. He chooses to see his lost love, Millie. He tracks down her still in a similar town, working at a bar. Yet again his old nemesis Mark, figures out how to stir up some dust. What's more, in a hurry David magically transports him into a bank vault, then leaves him there. Getting back to the bar, he requests that Millie go with him to Rome. She is stunned, yet as it's her deep-rooted dream she can acknowledge. At the point when they get to Rome, he partakes in her joy as he shows her around the antiquated city yet is recoiled when they find the stadium shut. Instead of taking no for a response and returning one more day, he circumvents the corner. Furthermore, 
When she makes up for lost time, he is holding an entryway open to concede her. He keeps on opening entryways from within as they seek after their confidential visit. Until they attempt to go down to the floor of the arena. Unexpectedly he is shocked to meet another jumper, Griffin, who informs him that he's not by any means the only one and that there is an entire gathering like Roland, Paladins, who need to kill jumpers. Also, two of them out of nowhere turn up. Griffin is ready to battle their strategies, and in the long run stifles the assailants and magically transports away. David follows Griffin's magical transport to his sanctuary, seeking clarification on pressing issues. He is confused, and Griffin's short clarifications, for example, making sense of him dropping a paladin into certain sharks, never really illuminate him. Griffin makes sense that David can't bear to have a sweetheart, family, or companions. That they are dead, that the paladins will kill them to get to him. David gets back to Millie and consents to leave, and they move away from authorities inside the amphitheater, just to be confined outside. David doesn't bounce, he advises Millie to return to the lodging, yet she declines. Hours after the fact, David is as yet being addressed by the police, who are holding him and his identification until a few different specialists show up. Out of nowhere, a lady, shows up, advising him to get out and leave his young lady, letting him know how long he needs to get away. He perceives her from his experience growing up pictures, she is his mom. He finds Millie and takes her to the air terminal, then makes sense of miserably that he can't return home with her. Meanwhile, Roland has been gotten to converse with Mar, whom David left in a bank vault. Mark, depleted from over and over recounting his story to doubting authorities, makes sense of what David's identity is, where they are from, all that he knows. Quickly taking advantage of this chance, Roland visits David's dad. David gets back to ask Griffin more inquiries, and this time the gamble to his family sinks in. He magically transports to his experience growing up home, and tracks down his dad on the floor. Crying, he magically transports his dad to a clinic trauma center, attempting to find support for him. He magically transport to see Mark in prison, asking everything that he said to Roland. Mark says he let him know everything. David understands that Millie will be in peril when she gets off the plane in the USA. Yet when he asks Griffin for help, Griffin denies. David follows Griffin through bounces, attempting to persuade him. Griffin swipes a vehicle and they ride together, Griffin magically transporting the vehicle through traffic as it suits him. They trade a few pieces of data. The paladins killed Griffin's folks when he was five, and David's mom left when he was five. David gets some information about magically transporting the vehicle, and Griffin laughingly recounts a jumper who attempted to magically transport a structure. He passed on in the endeavor. At long last, Griffin consents to help David for a restricted commitment. The numerous drawings of Roland in Griffin's home clarify that he has resentment against this paladin. They show up in the USA, and Millie's flight previously showed up an hour prior. He magically transports to her loft, wanting to get her out rapidly. However Roland and his assault crew show up before he can start to make sense of. He figures out how to magically transport her to Griffin's refuge, and Griffin reprimanded him for it, in light of the fact that Roland can straightforwardly follow his magical transport. Griffin gets ready to forsake his home, yet when Roland seems an incredible fight starts. At a certain point Griffin magically transports a transport at Roland, who figures out how to plunge under it as it bobs. David is caught, webbed up in a side of the room by Roland's electrical wiring to be discarded later. As Millie liberates David, her indignation at the circumstance and apprehension about his peculiar power are obvious. She requests that he simply bring her back home, and let her be. Normally, she is before long caught and kept prisoner. Griffin intends to take a bomb to Millie's condo to kill Roland. Nonetheless, this will include killing every other person there, including Millie. David doesn't need that, so both of them magically transport all over the planet, battling about the bomb, 
Then, at that point, over the detonator, tumbling from the Realm State Building and showing up in a disaster area, where David at last snares Griffin in some fallen electrical cables as powerful as Roland's snares. David gets back to Millie's condo, knowing he's strolling into the place of extreme peril. They utilize electric wires surrounding him to secure him, mooring them to the walls. David has Millie move near him, and, recalling Griffin's story, David doesn't attempt to move the entire structure, simply the parts connected to the anchor wires. As he utilizes his power, the structure starts to tear apart, and the rooftop breaks as the loft vanishes free from it. David magically transports Roland to a cavern and leaves him there, saying he ought to be thankful he didn't drop him at the sharks. David evaporates, and Roland strolls to the cavern opening, winding up a secluded precipice in the terrific ravine. It is winter, and we see David approach a costly home and thump. The high school young lady, Kristen Stewart, answers the entryway, followed minutes after the fact by David's mother, who sends her little girl to her room. David is there to figure out what everything means, and why she left him as a kid. She makes sense that she is a paladin, and when he caused his first to magically transport at age five she was unable to kill him, so she left him since she cherished him. He figures she ought to accomplish more, and she makes sense of who she is, this moment, since she's giving him an early advantage, he understands he won't get more from her. He goes out, and Millie meets him outside. He asks where she needs to go, and she says, shock me. They magically transport away. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell for more movie recaps.